Okay, I have this um, Briggs and Stratton engine, 6.75 horsepower. This is Quantum XM. I've diagnosed this with a broken connecting rod. So we'll just see what it looks like inside. I'll tip it over, you can hear it rattling around in there. I'm going to open it up by taking off the bolts to hold the sump cover on. I've already drained the oil part way. I mean, there's probably a little bit left in it, but that's why I have it upside down like this. As of right now, I'm just going to open it up, see what it's like in there. I'm not going to go any further until I look at the damage. And now that all the bolts are off, I'll just lift up. It's not easy to get off. I'm going to try prying it off. Let's inspect the damage. Well, it's definitely broken in there. As you can see, the oil wasn't too dirty. It's a little light. It's really quite a small engine. When you look inside. And it doesn't look like the crankshaft is too bad in there. It doesn't look like it's scored all that bad. And there are lots of shredded metal in here. Like right here. So put that at the bottom. Lots of it at the bottom. This oil smells weird. It smells like rubbing alcohol. Doesn't smell right. And it looks a little light. But I know this was ran with low oil because when I first got it, the oil was extremely low. You can see that the cap snapped and that had a little bit of scoring in there. Hopefully not too bad. Doesn't feel too bad. It's still pretty smooth. So maybe this is worth repairing. Next thing I'm going to need a new sump gasket. If I were to repair it. No deep scoring at all. It's just a little bit of scratches. It's not even catching my finger. So it doesn't look too bad at all. It's much better than I would have expected. So what I'll do is I'll drain it out in an oil pan. And I'll lock up parts. Some other things I'm going to have to check is the key on the flywheel to see if that got broken. I don't think it did since it didn't look like too bad of a break in here because the crankcase is all intact. There's no cracks in it so it didn't look like it snapped in too bad of a position. I also have to check to make sure that the piston isn't kind of seized in there. So I'll try to move the piston, see if I can do anything with that. I'm not going to take it out right now. I'll see if I can get it to move. Yep, it's moving just fine. The only reason it's hard to move is because I got spark plug in here. But if I take this out or just loosen it, this here is an RJ 19LM. Anyway, this should move nicely. Yeah, it moves all right. Now I'll push it back in, and I'll look at the cylinder, see if it's scratched. No, nope, that doesn't look too bad either. No scratches in the cylinder, that's good as well. Okay, so I guess this is repairable. Everything in here seems to be fine. So, I'll check out the keyway in there sometime later. And I'll just let this drain with the rest of the oil. So I don't want the oil in here when I'm working on it next time. And then I'll just put that in this oil pan. Alright, I was just making sure that there was a mark on the crankshaft and the camshaft gear so that I could put them back the right way with the correct timing and they're already marked so I don't have to worry about that I'm not sure if any engines would be unmarked but in case if it wasn't I just wanted to make sure I checked that just now because the camshaft might come out when I tip it over there's nothing actually holding it in right now yep there it goes I'll let this go for a day I'll come back up the metal's still falling out shards of metal anyway I just dumped out. It just shook a little bit, got some more metal out, and of course the cam and the governor and stuff came out, so I'm just taking out the lifters, and I'm marking them. I'm not sure if they're the same or if they're different, but I'm marking where they go. I'm making the, the top one is the exhaust, which is the top one when you're looking up like this. 
in this bottom one here. I'm assuming that's the intake since they do kind of look closer on that side. And I'm just taking out this keyway here. It's kind of stuck. It's really hard to get out, so I'm using a hammer and a screwdriver. I've already started trying to get it out, so it's probably going to come right out. That was in there pretty good. Wonder if I'll be able to get it back in. Alright, I've taken some of the parts out. Here's the one screw that goes under the end cap on the rod. The other screw's in on the, on the piston still. I mean on the connecting rod, it's broken. And I'm just going to remove this uh, front cover. So I removed the three bolts in here. I think they were 5 16 Yeah. And then there's a 3 8 bolt right here I still have to remove. A little washer on there too. This whole panel should come off. Like that, I had to remove the fuel line. Next I'm going to remove these bolts here. These here are 3 8 And the front here. There must have been some kind of Loctite on these bolts that are on the head. Probably because of the vibration. And the one by the dip tube is a 5 16 Okay, I had to take off the whole dipstick. And there's a little O ring on here. I think I have to make sure this stays there. And then this whole cover will come off. And there's another right here. I'm going to use an impact gun to get that off. Got my impact gun here. And um, gotta put it in reverse. So on this model, you just push it back to go in reverse, and it spins in reverse. So I'm just gonna take off this uh, nut here. It's a 15 16 There it is. If you don't have an impact gun. You may have to put a rope in the cylinder to stop the piston from moving, but in this case, you know, can't do that, so I'm not sure exactly how you'd want to get it off, but you gotta remember that the nut comes first, and then the starter cup, and then, you know, everything. There's normally a washer in here, but this model doesn't have it, and then I'm assuming the flywheel can come off now. I'm gonna keep all my parts in order. And this flywheel should just come right off. And the little keyway. Let's check it out. Well, the keyway looks good. Just slides right in here. Came out right away. Alright, now that I have the flywheel off, the whole crankshaft should just come right out. And I'll show you the damage. Okay, well, here's the crankshaft. And it's a pretty small crankshaft, I'm surprised. Some of these engines have a little bit bigger parts, but I'm used to taking apart all our engines, apparently. Alright, so it, I guess it doesn't seem too bad. You normally go by the depth of the scratches, and these aren't really too deep. It's going to take some sanding, though, that's for sure. This, this isn't smooth. Right, this, this here is real smooth. There's no scratches on that part, but here on the top. I don't know what this is, if that pocket's supposed to be there or not. Um, I don't know if that's supposed to keep oil in there or something, but this looks like it took the worst of it on the top here. But it doesn't look too bad, I've seen worse. So, this should be fixable. So, alright, I'll take the piston out. Alright, I'm going to take the piston out, I'm just going to pull it right out. Once you got the crankshaft out, there's no, no other complications. I took out the spark plug so that you can get it out easy. There's no back compression on it. And there it is. Now I noticed before I took this out, there was a lot of oil on the top of the piston and, and um, in the whole entire combustion chamber there's a lot of oil. 